Oh YouTube, what's really good? My name is Vivid and Jaden Animations has done it again. For those of you who don't know, I've reacted to two of Jaden's videos in the past. The best Pokemon game you never played and so I attempted a Pokemon Ruby Nuzlocke. I don't really remember the title of that one. And both of those videos are absolute bangers and Jaden just released. I attempted a Pokemon Platinum Nuzlocke. So I'm super stoked to watch this video. I've actually gotten a few comments about people telling me I needed to react to this one when it came out because apparently she's been doing it over on Twitch. I'm excited. I want to get right into this. But really quickly before I do, I just want to go ahead and ask what is your favorite Gen 4 Pokemon? For me, it's Toxicroak, there's something about frog Pokemon that I love. I don't really understand it, but I think Toxicroak is an amazingly designed Pokemon, and I just love it. Also, if you're not subscribed, please go ahead and consider subscribing. Something like 80% of my viewers are not subscribed. If that's you, click the sub button. We do a lot of live streams here on the channel, and I'm going to be picking up content soon. Also, there is a PS5 giveaway going on on the channel. That is a collaboration between me and Duncan Can't Die. Duncan is great. Massive shout out to him for supporting me. I'll put his link in the description down below. I know this is something that's been put off, but both of our schedules have just been really hectic. Just know that in order to actually be entered to win the PS5, you have to be subscribed to my channel. And I think you have to have left a comment on the video at some point in the past. He was telling me how the bot actually selects a winner. Either way, we're going to pick a winner soon. We'll contact you and all of that will be announced when it happens. Just know you don't have much time left. You have to be subscribed to the channel and have left a comment on a video. All right, those are my things. Leave a like if you like content like this, but let's just jump into this video. Okay, I'm here. I'm super excited. Jaden, I absolutely want to see you destroy the center region. The thumbnail makes me think that there's definitely going to be some sadness here as there always is with Nuzlocke. But let's get right into this. So if you're new here, Hi. Hi. I've done this before. Last year. Also, quick pause. That video was insane. I'm going to link Jaden's channel in the description down below. I'm just want to get that out of the way if you don't know who Jaden is, which I find highly unlikely or you haven't seen the original video. Definitely go watch that first. Also, the two reactions I've done to Jaden's other video, those will be linked in the description down below. Okay, go, go, go. I made a video about my first ever Pokemon Nuzlocke and the game I played in it was Pokemon Ruby. It was fun. So here I am again doing another. But this time Teriyaki. I attempted to Nuzlocke Pokemon Platinum. I'll Pokemon Platinum, or I think in general, uh, Gen 4 is considered like relatively hard to Nuzlocke. I'm not what you would consider a professional Nuzlocker. Like I've done several Nuzlocks, but I'm not someone who has like a massive catalog. Like I'm no Pokemon challenges or a drive. Like I don't have like a massive, massive catalog of hard Nuzlocks. I consider myself like a, a casual Nuzlocker, but I'm pretty sure that Gen 4 is relatively difficult to do. I'll explain again super quickly how a Nuzlocke works. You can only catch the first Pokemon you run into per route. If a Pokemon faints, it dies and you can't use it anymore. And you have to nickname your Pokemon so you grow more attached to them. <laughs> if you still don't understand, that's not my problem. Good, good. I'm really glad that she breaks down the Nuzlocke rules at the beginning of each video because I think that that's something that obviously like we as Pokemon creators don't really consider doing anymore because we just assume our audience knows. But since she's not strictly a Pokemon creator, I don't know. I feel like it just makes the appeal way more broad. OK, go, go. Let's get started. Who boy. This was my Pokemon Platinum Nuzlocke. I'm stoked for this. Pokemon. <laughs> <laughs> so my friend and neighbor Barry is practically dragging me all over the place with his hyperactive squirrel brain frantically trying to get a Pokemon as soon as possible. Yeah, Barry is a little bit much in the, the Gen 4 games. Barry's always like, yo, I'm going to fine you $10 billion if you don't beat me to this place. And also Pokemon. I don't know. Barry, I think, is probably one of the more annoying rivals. From this Professor Rowan he saw on TV. He drags me out to Route 201 and is about to leap into the tall grass when, hold it. You guys know going into the tall grass is practically a death wish, right? <laughs> what you're doing is basically suicide. Borderline insanity. What absolute moronic lunatics <laughs> you are. Have you no respect for your lives? Do you have any Pokemon? <laughs> Rowan really is like that though. Rowan's a really interesting professor because he's really, really stern, but also some of the things he says are absolutely ridiculous. Uh, I think this is a good representation of how you first encounter Rowan, where he's like, yo, what you're doing, really dumb. Also, let me give you a Pokemon. It's, uh, it doesn't make a ton of sense, uh, but it's funny. It's funny. No. Do you want some? <laughs> and like that, I have a Turtwig. I named Ooh. him Turt and immediately... Turtwig, Turtwig's my choice uh, for, for Gen 4 as well. Turtwig, I think it's like Turtwig, Piplup, Chimchar. I, I think Chimchar is just the most popular and I'm like a hipster kid kind of at heart. Uh, so I always go with Turtwig because I think it's the least popular. Also, I just really like grass types. I don't know. In the... In the I immediately used him to bash in Barry's Chimchar. I was making my way through the routes, but right as I was about to nab the Shinx I found on 202... Shinx Don't is a good like encounter. Nope! Oh. Uh, 
So that's, no shinx for us. That's unfortunate. But- I feel like this happened in her Ruby uh, Nuzlocke as well. Like her starter just crit something and she didn't get to catch it. It's a really bad taste in your mouth for that to happen the first two Nuzlocke you do. But man, uh, shinx would have been a good encounter, especially if it has Intimidate. Shinx with Intimidate is really, really valuable throughout the game. But that's all right. Shinx isn't that great this early anyway. Then I locked eyes with our first trainer, the first battle. Let's see how we fare against youngster Tristan and his level five Starly. Oh, oh my God. So in the first trainer battle. Crits abundant. Wait, 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 wait. Jaden just started this playthrough and all of these crits are super sus, but you know what's even more sus than that? The Pokemon Among Us crossover t-shirt will be linked to my merch store in the description down below. If you like Pokemon and you like Among Us, this is the shirt for you. It depicts all the Eevee illusions as Among Us crewmates. I think this shirt design is absolutely incredible. My wife knocked it out of the park. If you would like one of these shirts, it will not be in the store forever. So definitely go pick it up while you still can. Link in the description down below once again. Okay, back to the video. <laughs> well, I ever fought, I almost immediately lose my starter to a critical hit. Yeah. Why do I suddenly have a very bad feeling about this? Nevertheless, we kept going onward through Jubilife City where we we cut Kron I like the in that last scene Looker is in the background. I like that cuz Looker he plays a role in the games. I don't think it matters a ton. Uh, but he's in there, so I like seeing him arguing with the uh, the male trainer in the background. The Zubat in the cave above Route 204 and Magikarp on 218. Hi Magikarp. Your name is Puppy. Just outside the city, Barry runs up and demands another battle, so I happily bash in his Chimchar again. Jeez. And Starly too. I kept on my way, eventually arriving in Orberg City, and nervously challenged Rourke. I was terrified of his Cranidos, but Turret landed uh, a crit it. razor leaf and one-shot it before- it that's so brutal. It didn't have to cut off its head. Oh my god, that's brutal. Also, I just want to touch on Magikarp and Zubat, I think are really good encounters early. Zubat is just really good defensively and just kind of like well-rounded, especially when it evolves in a Crobat finally. And also, this is the first generation where I think Magikarp is actually a good Pokemon because Gyarados gets physical water moves in this gen and it didn't have that before. So good starting lineup, Jaden. I'm here for it. Or could even do anything. So that's badge number one for us. I made it to Floroma Town and was really excited because if you didn't know, outside the Valley Woodworks, you can find Shellos. And if you didn't oh. know, again, I love Shellos. <laughs> I ran straight to the grass to get my okay. Shellos encounter and... Oh no. <laughs> Oh, I'm Shinx not going to pass good. up an encounter, so I very depressingly caught the Shinx and named it Failure to vent my <laughs> sadness and frustration over not getting a slug. No. While there, we found Team Galactic. Oh, that's so funny, not getting a slug. I never think of uh, Shellos and Gastrodon as slugs, but that, that's what they are. They just don't, they don't look like standard slugs, but when you put it that way, it is, it's defo a slug. Okay. Like messing around, stealing electricity and this little girl's dad. So I beat oh, up no. the grunt guarding the door, broke in, beat up the grunts in the building until <laughs> turd evolved, then found Galactic Commander Mars at the end of the corridor, who I was scared of because she's got a fat cat that hits like a uh, semi-truck. But I yeah. had a plan. This So this fight specifically, per ugly, is really, really hard to get past. Also, I think it's really, really great how she keeps uh, animating herself actually bashing Pokemon with Turtwig. It, it's really nice, really fun. Funny, but yeah, yeah, this fight is is nothing to scoff at. This per ugly is really strong. I think it's like a relatively high level for this point in the game. And also it's just fully evolved, so it has good stats. And back in the Orberg mines, I caught Dwayne the Onyx, and I brought him to the oh. fight because in case things got dicey, I would switch him in to buy time and heal up my other Pokemon. Basically, uh, Dwayne was death fodder. Turt took out <laughs> Mars's Zubat, and when Perugly came out, Kronk plucked off the Orenberry it was holding. But she got hit pretty hard in the process, Oof. and since Turt needed a bit of healing before he could get back into it, Dwayne can take a scratch. Oh man. Oh no. Is Dwayne gonna live? It's level 9 versus level 17. That's insane. Yeah, this Perugly is really high level. I don't remember this Perugly's moveset, but I know it can use more than just normal type moves. Oh, I'm really scared. Onyx is really good physically defensively though, so it might be able to take one more hit and allow you to heal. We'll see. Uh. Look at that. Dwayne is Dwayne is fine. He's fine, guys. Don't pull oh, the, no, the, the sad nose no. for Dwayne. <laughs> Dwayne's fine. Don't worry about him. Don't worry about him. Oh, oh my god. <laughs> the hidden focus Dude. sash. All right, I'll give him that. And it got a screech off. Oh, that's everything. Oh, Dwayne has set up Jaden for success here. Dwayne the Rock Onyx. I'm, I'm here for it. I'll give him that. Dwayne gets to live. Somehow, when Dwayne was supposed to die, he hung in there on one HP. And Wild. you know what? 
I respected the hell out of him for it. I let Absolutely. Dwayne live and Turt was able to take out the Perugly. What a legend. Yeah. But then I put him back in the box and moved on. <laughs> in Mount Cornet, I caught a Bronzor I named Big Boy, which I happily added to the team. And right oh. before Gardenia's gym, Kronk evolved, which meant no mercy for those flower ladies. Badge nice. number two. We Bronzor is actually a really good encounter. Uh, Still Psychic is really solid typing. It has two really, really useful abilities. So it has Heat Proof and Levitate. So Levitate makes it immune to one of its weaknesses and Heat Proof makes it to where it's just neutral to one of its weaknesses. So Bronzor, super solid encounter. Um, not really much offensively, but can be a really good defensive pivot for a team. We slashed the guard bushes in front of the Galactic Building and ran up all the stairs where we fought Galactic Commander Jupiter. Let's take a look at how that went. Don't crit. Oh no. Don't crit, don't crit. Oh no. Ah, ah, no! <gasps> okay, okay, but, okay. I mean, That's so, oh that my gosh. Do... Oh, oh, it was a crit. Let's it just was a razor leaf though. Hit it. Don't crit him. Oh, there's no way this lives. No. Oh my, oh god. my god. We finally were able to beat her, but that fight really knocked the wind out of me. I was. That's so many crits already in this game. The Starly on this, the trainer Starly in Route One crit. Um, obviously, Razor Leaf has a high crit chance, so every crit that Jaden's gotten with Razor Leaf kind of makes sense. And Night Slash is a high crit move, but this is a lot. This is a lot of crits already. There's a lot of crits doing a lot of, of, of bad things in this game right now. Shaking on my way back to the Pokemon Center when this lady Cynthia shows up and is like, "Egg." Egg. <laughs> uh, uh, yeah. Anyway, even <laughs> meeting Cynthia wasn't enough to calm my nerves. So to keep my mind off the absolute tragedy we narrowly avoided, I decided to start training up Big Boy on Cycling Road. A big Boy. And then he died. It. Oh. I've practiced this game and. No, a crit. So before you push up your. A crit. It's so many crits. There's so many crits. My goodness. Your anime glasses and tell me that steel is weak to fire, <laughs> which I know, by the way. The reason I kept Big Boy in was because not only is his defense an iron wall, but yeah. he had heat proof. Which oh, see, this is what I was talking about. Yeah. Oh, uh, so the crit 100% mattered. Like the Ponyta had to get a crit. Wild. It's a wild world we live in. Negates his fire weakness, but then he got crit. So first step. I'm sorry, big boy. Unfort. You never had the opportunity to become a big boy. Never I walked lucky. into Wayward Cave and found a Gibble. Gibble is an amazing- That's really fortunate. That's a hard encounter to get early game. If I'm if I'm remembering correctly, I don't think that Gibble is super common in this cave. I could be wrong. I could be very wrong. And I know you can get it early, but I feel like you kind of have to work to get it early. Like I think you have to use repels, maybe. I don't I don't really fully remember. Either way, amazing encounter. Using Pokemon. It turns into Garchomp, which is easily one of, if yeah. not the strongest Pokemon in the game that isn't a legendary. Specifically in Gen 4, yes, I think so. I think Garchomp would be considered the strongest Pokemon that's not a legendary. Probably not anymore, but during this time, yeah, probably. Adding it to the team would give us such a huge advantage, and now there is nothing in my way between that and... No. Crits are ruining lives. And we're moving on. Oh. We arrived in Heart Home City where I caught DeVito the Rocks, bad. Kronk, and Puppy Evolved. We had a clean win against Fentina, and some lady gave us an Eevee I named Milk. Things were starting <laughs> to look better now. Milk. I was leveling up DeVito against trainers, and when fighting this lovey dovey couple. Uh, let's go into Puppy. Get rid of the Buizel. Oh no! Oh no. It's not a fairy type this generation, so it hits super effectively. Pursuit is the worst. I had something, I had something get hit by pursuit in my crystal damageless playthrough that I'm doing. Uh, shout out to that. I'm live streaming it, by the way. If you want to check it out, y you should. But getting pursued in just like a base playthrough of the game never feels good. It it feels really bad. Oh, this is gonna kill too. The levels are too high. Oh. You're kidding. You're Absurd. kidding. Not good. And that's Not why fun. I hate love. In came <laughs> Shrimp the Scyther I caught on Route 210. Some good news on Route... Okay, Scyther Scyther's really strong. I don't know if she's going to evolve it, because to evolve Scyther, you have to trade evolve it, unless you have the game set to where impossible evolutions are fine. Uh, but if she has to evolve it, then she'll have to figure out some way. I, I'm assuming she's playing on a ROM. She'll have to figure out some way to trade, which is a nightmare in these games, by the way. But either way, Scyther, good mod. Route 213, I finally found a Shellos. I named it oh. Swoop, and I loved it. I loved <laughs> it so much. I know you're not supposed to have a favorite child, but Swoop was my favorite child. 
Weirdo finds slug on the side of the road, legally adopts it, and wholeheartedly. And I wasn't apologetic about it. I trained. Considers it her child. It's her favorite child. That's so funny. I mean, I hey, I'm here. I'm here for it. I like Gastrodon. Uh, uh, probably a decent amount more than the average person. So I get it. I get the appeal. Blue Gastrodon way better than pink Gastrodon or Shellos, whichever, like the blue variant way better than pink. Just want to get that out of the way. Ended up and now we got a Gastrodon. Nice. Turret ended up evolving too. So together with Kronk and Squoop, Maylene was defeated and badge number four was Very secured. Cool. Outside of Pastoria City, I caught a Quagsire <laughs> named Lol. But when I went to get my great Marsh encounter, I was trying to get a Yanma and accidentally okay. threw a ball at a Wooper. Oh so no. Also, most people play the game where you do species claws or dupes claws. It's like two different things, but basically you can't catch something in the same evolution line or you can't catch the same Pokemon twice. I mean, you can, but people People will say you don't have to. That way you can add more variety. So she could have kept hunting for a Yanma if she played by that rule. But I guess she was just playing with whatever you run into. That's your that's your encounter. It's kind of like the old traditional way to play. Now we've got Lol and Oops in the box. Then I swept Crasher Wake with Milk, who is now a Jolteon with okay, the TM nice. Thunder I bought literally next door. I walked out of the gym. And Thunder is risky. Thunder is a risky move. Uh, 70 accuracy is... Not fun, um, uh, as I know wholeheartedly by clicking Focus Blast a bunch throughout my competitive career. But I mean, if it if it works for you, it works. I mean Team Galactic set off a bomb. I ran down the grunt who detonated <laughs> it and took him out because he is weak. Cynthia appears again and tells me to bring a charm to her grandma. So I'm like, yes, ma'am. We found her in Celestial Town along with Cyrus, the leader of Team Galactic, who starts some evil Shakespeare speech about how everything is imperfect, so he's got to <laughs> blow up the world or something. I don't know. I wasn't really paying attention. And I vaguely i haven't played through gen 4 in a long time i vaguely remember this uh this speech like cyrus's monologue here being very long-winded and kind of like you're just word vomiting you're word vomiting things yeah, yeah i totally get falling asleep in the quarter here and then he wanted to fight puppy took out his sneasel and i sent out milk to take care of his goal bat but milk decided Fair. he wanted to be lazy and not only miss all his thunders yeah, yeah, but also yeah, yeah. punch himself in the oh, face no. milk Okay, Poison Fang's stab, but low power. Oh, no. It's gonna live. It's gonna live. Basic you mash. can't. It you lives. can't okay. be doing this. Kronk came out and killed Ooh. the Golbat because Milk was being difficult, but I gave him a second chance and he took out the Murkrow. <laughs> anyway, here's your dusty charm. I went out and caught a Magnemite named C, then arrived in Canal okay, City fair. where we barged into Byron's gym and demolished his team with Scoop and Turd. Then Team Galactic sets advantage. off another bomb, this time at Lake Valor. So Barry, Professor Rowan's assistant Lucas, and I split up to check on the lakes. As I'm strolling past all the flopping Magikarp, I run into Galactic Commander Saturn, who we swept the floor with. Oh, so she did evolve the Scyther into a scissor. I don't know how it happened. I didn't watch. I watched a little bit of the live streams. I didn't tune into the whole thing. I don't know how this happened, but this is really cool. Having scissor is just like a way better Pokemon defensively and offensively. I think they both have their merits, but either way, uh, scissor is a really, really valuable asset to the team. IMO because I think it's only weak to fire. So good. Good mon. Glad she evolved it. After that, we headed over to Lake Verity where we did the exact same with Mars. There was a part nice. where Turt got crit and almost died. So oh, yeah. many crits. Oh, but we're fine. He's fine. Finally, we <laughs> had to go check up on Barry at Lake Acuity. And after trekking through six feet of snow for like a mile, we get there to find Barry at the top of a cliff like, ha ha ha, you can't climb rocks. Come back when you can climb rocks, <laughs> loser. I'll go okay. fight Candace's gym now, I guess. Now, we've been having some good type matchups with the past few gyms. Oh, her team is not great against Ice. Crobat weak. Uh, tur what is it? Torterra weak. Crobat weak. Jolteon not really bulky. Gyarados neutral. Gastro yeah, this is not good. Uh, the scissor should be fine. I don't see the scissor here. The scissor resists everything and should be okay. So I haven't really been nervous about most of them, but Candace uses ice types, which like half my team is weak against. Yeah. Which, you know, nervousness rising. Not I only was I at a massive type disadvantage, but the main threats on our team were her Obama Snow because mm. it hits like a truck and sets up hail, and her Frostless because it'll use the hail from the Obama Snow to heighten its evasiveness right. with Snow Cloak. Spam double teams, and then just sweep my team. I walked in, yeah. took a deep breath, which... This is not like a super easy fight. The Frostless is pretty annoying. Anything that 
boosts its evasion is not fantastic. And since weather is permanent in this generation, the Frost Slash just permanently has the evasion. So a lot of people will bring their own counter weather to this fight if you have access to something like Sunny Day or Rain Dance, uh, just because the evasion from Frost Slash is not good. There's also uh, there's just moves that don't miss, uh, which is worth noting. She didn't make me feel better at all and started the battle. Shrimp took out her Sneasel and okay, Scoop took fair. out her pile of swine, almost fair. dying in the process. And then she no, finally okay. brought out the big bad Obama Snow. Since it's grass ice type, I taught Puppy Fire Blast. <laughs> yeah, I didn't know we could... Anyway, I wasn't sure, sure it could one shot because Puppy is not a special attacker and lo and behold, it didn't. Yeah, I, I was going to say, Gyarados' special attack is really, really bad. It doesn't surprise me that this doesn't one shot. Didn't miss. Please kill it. Please. It's quad. It's quad. Mm. That's close. What? Eventually, Puppy took it out, but that was absolutely yeah. terrifying. Last but not least, Frostlass. I mm. wanted to have Swoop Rain Dance to get rid of the hail so Frostlass's Snow Cloak isn't activated. Okay, fair. Like I said, having a counter weather, pretty smart here. You're wasting a turn and taking damage to do it, and if it sets up a double team, that's also not great for you. But since Scoop was sitting at a not so chill 20 oh, okay, HP, okay. that mind. wasn't going to work out super great. However, since I didn't want Kronk to be in this fight at all, right before the fight, I swapped her with Failure the Shinx. No. Yep. Sorry, little guy. Failure looked up at the looming death that was Frostlass in front this of her, sad. and as I healed up Scoop, Failure was killed in its blizzard. It's really unfortunate we had to resort to it, but I give Failure a salute. I'm also just kind of, I don't fully remember Frostlass's moveset. I'm assuming it has a ghost type attack. I don't remember, but I feel like Scizor would have been fine here. Scizor probably would have been able, I, I don't know what Scizor's HP was at. Um, maybe she absolutely had to death fodder off a uh, failure here. It's really sad, uh, but it's a strategy that you just have to use sometimes in these Nuzlocks. I don't know. I just feel like the Scizor would have been able to just knock out the Frostlass at. Wow. Moving on. For stepping up and surrendering its life to the team. Scoop <laughs> came out, got off the rain dance, and after a close battle, was able to pull through. We won, but it wasn't without sacrifice. We had yeah. a moment of silence for failure, the true MVP of the fight. Gone, but not forgotten. Aww. Now we could climb the rocks to Lake rip, Acuity, rip. and when we got up there, Barry's got snot dripping down his <laughs> face, crying in the snow because he got beat up by Jupiter, who looks at me and is like, See ya, I'm going Deuces. to Veilstone HQ. <laughs> Dog Barry sucks. Uh, <laughs> I'm gonna go to Veilstone. We start yeah. running through the base trying to find Cyrus, but when fighting this scientist. Psychic. I love Porygon, but typically when she cuts to these scenes, it means there's about to be either a close call or a loss. I'm really terrified she's about to lose Squoop to one of my favorite Pokemon. Porygon 2 freaks me out. It yeah. is way too powerful, way too bulky, and it's way too weird. Weird. I do like Porygon 2, though. Okay, big fan. I would fan. like a flush of Porygon 2. Very cute. What? No. What? 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 So many crits. No! No! Scoop! Actual infinity crits. We lost Scoop! I wasn't okay. Kurt came out and curb stomped the Porygon 2 out of vengeance, but to put it lightly, I wasn't taking that too well. Yeah. It's a hard loss when you're when you My lose your heart favorite member. Is breaking. I'm like actually sad. <laughs> but life doesn't stop when your dog dies, so I had to keep trucking <laughs> and brought Law the Quagsire to the team. With an intense blood. Okay. Same type. I feel like she could probably diversify a little bit. I don't know what all she has in the box, but I, it, having a ground type is really good, but I don't necessarily know that having like double water types is the wave. I don't know. It's been working though. Hurtling thirst for revenge, I stormed into Cyrus's room. Get him. Fight! Shrimp and Milk took out his <laughs> team in no time. I snatched his master ball and used his teleport pad to enter the basement where Mess Spirit, Azelf, and Yuxi are all being held captive. 
fight. fight. And like Cyrus, yeah. Saturn was swept too. After releasing the late guardians, we head to Mount Coronet because Cyrus wants to go there and destroy the planet, I think. And we catch up to him at the Spear Pillar. Before we can run up and attack him, Mars and Jupiter step in. Then Barry arrives. Okay. Honestly, I have no idea how he found us all here. <laughs> and it's like, I'll help. Lol takes out both the bronzers, Mars is progly, and Barry's munchlax. <laughs> so I thought, you know, it was all smooth sailing, right? Yeah. Well... Wow, Barry. Really doing a oh, lot for the Oh, no. Oh, no. I'm not 100%. Like, don't get me wrong. Um, the Quagsire here can eat up any normal attacks, right? Like any poison type attacks, any flying type attacks, like any of the stab moves. I'm like relatively certain that Golbats get like Mega Drain and or Giga Drain and or Absorb. Like all I'm saying is I know they get grass type coverage. I know that from playing through Let's Go Pikachu and Eevee and using a Golbat like pseudo competitively. Uh, ooh, I don't know if it's a level up move or if it's a TM. Typically Pokemon don't have TM moves or like egg moves. I don't know. Well, let's see. Um, uh, I'm nervous. Team, aren't ya? Yeah. Oh my god, no, it has Giga Drain? Is that a level up move? No. Is that a level up move? I feel no. like I have to. Oh, uh, no. I, I oh. need to confirm. I need to confirm. Okay, one second. Okay, I'm back. It's not a level up move. This Golbat just knew the TM for Giga Drain. That's wild. That's a wild way to lose a team member. That sucks. Oh no. No, it was a crit. Not only did I not know their goal, but it had Giga Drain for yeah. some reason, but it also got a crit. So mm. I was starting to feel bad, but then I started panicking. The thing is, after you fight Mars and Jupiter, you have to go into the Distortion World and fight Cyrus and Giratina. If mm -hmm. Cynthia forces us into the Distortion World without us being able to get a new member, we're in massive trouble. You we can, finish up the battle and Cyrus away. starts his whole spiel about how the world is imperfect. Blah, blah, <laughs> blah. Everything must die except for me. Then he gets swallowed up by Giratina. A hole Yikes. opens a rip in space leading to the distortion world. And I'm kind of just standing off to the side, twiddling my thumbs like, Cynthia, please don't shove me in there without my consent. <laughs> Cynthia, can I, can I go? I have something to do. Our world will be destroyed. Are you ready? No, I'm not. Let me go. That's so funny. Like the world is ending, but instead of there being a sense of urgency, Cynthia is like, all right, do you need to like, you know, maybe go get a glass of tea, uh, a snack before we go in? Like, I don't know. The Pokemon games are very much this way. Like I knew she would be able to walk away because I don't think any of the games that like, kind of force you into the like dungeon-esque areas uh it's just really funny thinking about like the world's ending you need to you need to go take a breather real quick uh, anyways i'm free holy crap let get me out of here <laughs> goodbye i'm sorry lol we just got you and then you died but luckily Life remember when i accidentally caught that whooper while trying to get a yanma it's time, oops. You are no <laughs> accident. You're our lucky star who will carry us to victory. I we got oops drool. leveled up, came back to the spear pillar where Cynthia was just sitting there waiting for us, and hopped in. Everything is topsy-turvy and the late guardians are telling me to push boulders into holes. And suddenly <laughs> I'm on a floating crest of land with Cynthia, who's basically like... The distortion world is wild. It was a wild, like, area to be in a Pokemon game. I think it's really unique, too. Anyways, just side tidbit about the distortion world. Like, Cyrus... Get lost and never come back. And Cyrus didn't like that. So he came at me. Oops <laughs> took out his Houndoom and his Gyarados came out, so I switched to Milk. But I was very terrified because Cyrus's Gyarados has Earthquake. So if Milk misses his Thunder here, oh, no. he dies. And Milk is notorious for missing his Thunders. But please milk. Hit. Okay. Milk lives another day. Good, good. He also took out Cyrus's Crobat and Haunch Crow, and Shrimp finished up his Weavile. Cyrus steps aside, and suddenly it's just me and the Angel of Darkness itself, Giratina. Giratina's nuts. Whatever's happening is insane. Whatever's happening is like, thematically, I, I don't know, like artistically, Cinematically, I don't know. Whatever's happening right now is like insane. I threw the master ball and like that, it was over. Sure. I saved the okay. world.
But why did now you Now to split? get back to my gym badges. I arrived <laughs> at Sunny Shore City and started making my way through Volkner's gym. I know he's the eighth gym leader and he's supposed to be tough and apparently he's depressed because everyone who challenges him isn't good enough and he's bored. But I wasn't concerned. We have a- Side note, I really like Volkner. I think aesthetically and sort of like character wise, he's probably one of my favorite gym leaders just because I think there's something about that like lacks like, oh, I'm too good attitude that kind of a appeals to me and also he just looks really cool I, I don't know cool gym leader i like electric types oops and none of his pokemon can do anything about it it's not like they have giga drain or anything right they didn't i checked oops <laughs> was just earthquake Good. and everything and at the end i'll admit i got a bit scared okay don't crit if you crit giga impact that would be really unfortunate Okay. Holy! But it's all good. That We're was a all lot good. Of and with that, off to Victory Road we went, where we caught ourselves a Gabite I named Flakes. Oh, nice! Would have been nice to have one. I don't know, near the beginning of the game, say, in Wayward Cave, you know. <laughs> but whatever. Better late than never. It's good to have just in case something goes horribly wrong out of nowhere. It's gonna be a crit. Flakes is base sixty. Yeah. There's no way this kills unless it's a crit. It's gonna be a crit. It is. It's an amazing, whoa, 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 no! My goodness, so many You're crits. You're kidding. Crit the game. <laughs> oh dear. And that's the straw that broke the camel's mm, back. After puppy. puppy died, I stepped back and decided the team we go into the Elite Four with needs to be the best possible team we can build. The Elite Four here goes pretty hard. Yeah. So See, I think the Elite Four, and specifically Cynthia, are, are some of the reasons that this game is notoriously hard to beat uh, with a Nuzlocke. Like, the Elite Four just have, like, pretty tough teams, and then Cynthia's team is really, really well-rounded. Well, I couldn't go in willy-nilly just hoping for the best. After literally a few hours of <laughs> calculations and research, I settled on a team I thought would give us the highest... Okay, so we have the Torterra here, a Magna Zone. Oh, she caught a Magnemite way earlier. Magnet. Uh, we got Lol Oops. Colgate, uh, which is a Togekiss. Uh, Cynthia's Egg. Okay. Uh, we got a Garchomp, Strong Power Shrimp. Okay, I'm here for it. There's a little bit of a fire weakness, which isn't great um, for Flint, I think, is the fire Elite Four members. Because you have one, two three fire weaknesses one of them 4x and then well you have garchomp and oops though okay all right i'm fine it's good it's a good team possibility of winning i added flakes to the team in place nice. of poppy and with a heavy heart left milk and cronk behind Aww. as i brought see the now magna zone and colgate the togekiss i hatched from the eggs cynthia gave me even though i was sad to yeah. not bring milk and cronk into the it's also really good to acknowledge when you need to like swap something on and off your team in a nuzlocke like Obviously, we get attached to things, but if you're attached to it and that causes the Pokemon to faint and you lose it because of that, that's just more heart-wrenching than boxing them and knowing that they're living to fight another day. I don't know. Modular team building in these games is a good thing. The final battles with us, they won't be forgotten. And it doesn't negate the fact they were such huge assets to the team, and I wouldn't have made it this far without them. I'll see you guys on the other side. I took a step towards the doors of no return and immediately got interrupted by Barry who <laughs> wanted to have one last fight. Anyway. <laughs> Three minutes later. Yeah, Barry sucks, dude. What is this? I don't Welcome. like it. This is the Elite Four. It makes me anxious. The battle starts and C takes out Aaron Zeon, Mega, and Vesviquin. Oops takes out his Rapion and Colgate takes out his Scissor and Heracross. Okay. Next up is Bertha. I don't like it. It's anxiety inducing. Bertha loves ground types, but Turt and Oops had a smooth time smashing through her team. I felt a horrible shiver when her right yeah, carrier came I out, don't like but it. things went well. On to Flint. Okay. Only the fire week mons? Flint has a pretty scary team, but luckily Oops and Flakes had no trouble yeah. plowing through them as well. And with that, we're on to the last uh, member. I think Lucian. I'm picking up on now, what's Shrimp happening Now, Shrimp hasn't here. had much time to shine in these fights so far, so I decided I wanted to let her go all out. She set up sword stances and bullet punched everything. Proud oh, of very Shrimp. cool. And suddenly, I'm at the entrance to the champion. 
bullet punch scissor was kind of like the defining pokemon of this meta or it was at least one of the defining pokemons in in like the diamond pearl platinum meta game like if your team couldn't stand up to technician choice band bullet punch scissor it, your team wasn't a team so it's cool to see her actually like using this strategy in the elite four the trainer who's been known to crush dreams in a single battle and many still fear to this day i took a deep breath Things are going surprisingly well, and I don't know how to feel about it. But I looked up, and there she was. At this moment, I have only one last objective. Defeat Cynthia. Cynthia's She leads with Spiritomb, which has no weaknesses, so so I sent out Turt to hit it as hard as possible. Flakes takes out her Togekiss, and then her Garchomp comes out. This is known to be one of the toughest boss Pokemon in the entire franchise, and rightfully so. That thing was made by Satan himself, (laughs) and I'm sure even he fears what he has created. I immediately switched to Oops, who's the only Pokemon that can lead us to victory here. I planned to put it to sleep with Yawn, and then Ice Beam it until it died. That was our only hope okay so this strategy is a little odd i feel like ice beam would probably just two hit ko right i mean it would depend on levels but you take two hits this because garchomp's always going to outspeed quagsire here right so like you take two hits before you actually get a hit off just to set up a yawn when i feel like you could probably just ice beam and then gauge damage from there because quagsire is like a relatively bulky boy i don't know i'm hoping but i'm nervous but then, oops, is crit. No, and crit, that was it. Dude. Nothing on my team can take a hit from this monster. And even if they could, they couldn't do much damage back. I sat there in disbelief, knowing there wasn't anything I could have done. And the battle is basically unwinnable now. I brought out Shrimp to bullet punch it so we could get in a little bit of damage, but she was killed. Oh, Colgate no. tried to chip away at it. He did some damage too, but was crit one shot. At this point, no. I had accepted defeat. Only Turt, C, and... So many crits, dude. So many crits. What do you have left? Garchomp. I'm assuming your Garchomp is not as high of a level as for Garchomp. The, I mean, Torterra. Yeah, the Magna Zone is super, super dead. Oh, my goodness. And Flakes were left. It's hopeless at this point. Flakes came out, and against all odds... Flakes outsped Cynthia's Garchomp. This is so brutal. I didn't think he could do it. He was two levels weaker, and I just, I I, I don't know. I did, I just didn't think he could outspeed it. Oh, okay. So this is something that's like really important in these games. Like what you level up on gives you EVs. So the trainer's Pokemon aren't EV'd. So leveling up on Ponyta's gave speed EVs. So it outsped. That's insane. Also, it's a really feel bad moment when you could have outsped something and O-coded it with like a Dragon Claw and you, I don't know, basically sacked off two Pokemon. Like, I've been there, done that. It's a feel bad moment. You never feel good about doing it. Suddenly, there was a chance. We could win this after all. Cynthia brings out her Milotic, which C took out with a few Thunderbolts. Yeah. Flakes took out the Lucario with Dig. Look, my Earthquake TM is on Scoop <laughs> and we all know what happened there. Finally, oh, her last Pokemon comes out. Roserade. Flakes went in for the Dragon Claw, and the battle was over. Nice. We won. As Cynthia is congratulating me, a sudden feeling of mm-hmm. overwhelming guilt washes over my entire body. So intense it almost knocks me down. I don't think I deserve this. Something here isn't right. This wasn't meant for me. Back in the distortion world when Giratina split me in two, how do I know I'm me? What happened in the other timeline where I saw glimpses of what happened parallel to this world, that was me too. Those things happened. Was that the ending I'm destined to have? The world I'm living in now is how I want things to be, but the other Jaden is equally me as I am her. Even if you might think I deserve this dimension, things don't work like that. Are there some things you can't escape, even when you try everything you can do to alter it? I don't know the answer. I may be able to sit on this throne now and thank all the Pokemon that put in everything to help me get here. All the hard work, blood, sacrifices we made, but I don't think I can ever accept this victory. 
Okay. So I'm sorry I'm not responding or, or like reacting during this moment. I'm actually just trying to take this in. I, I have a feeling I understand what's happening here and like what she's getting at. I'm going to like have to do a little bit of research and come back. I'm going to wrap up the video. And then if what I think is happening is right, I'll, I'll, I'll say what I think is happening. I guess I'll say it right now. What I think is happening is she lost. At least that's what it seems like. It seems like she lost at some point during the first run through of the Elite Four, like either by crits or just by like improper like switching. Something happened. It looked like the right on or sorry, the right period knocked out Gar Chomp and Quag Sire. I think it was like holding two Pokemon up. Either way, what I think happened is like she lost some Pokemon during the Elite Four or maybe like lost the entire Elite Four battle and then kind of like ran it back. Uh, just to see if she could beat the Elite Four. We'll, we'll continue forward and see if that's actually what happened. I don't know what ending was meant for me. And I don't think I ever will. Oh, that's it. Okay, I'm gonna have to, I'm gonna have to go do research. Oh, that's, that ending, like, that ending was insane. Like, this ending is super dramatic super um i don't know like i'm invested i i'm here for it like i would watch an entire series of, of just this right like just like these stories of like Jaden's playthroughs like Jaden could redo the entire pokemon anime and i would watch it because that's how i don't know like it's how good the storytelling is here uh, anyways i'm gonna i'm gonna like go do some research and then i'm gonna wrap up with my my thoughts here all right i'm back i've done my research i have thoughts i just want to say like big shout out to Jaden. these videos are so insane like they're so incredibly well done and she always makes the game seem way more immersive than they are just like i said the storytelling Telling is insane. The animation is fantastic. But I was right in a sense. Uh, what had happened was Jaden went into the Elite Four, and I'm I mean, like I couldn't find like an actual like source. Uh, but what I'm seeing in like sort of other people's videos or like the comment section of this video is that she went into the Elite Four and she lost her only fire resists to Bertha, and then she lost the fire neutral Pokemon. So like all she had was fire weak Pokemon going into Flint and she knew it wasn't a playthrough that she could actually win so instead of continuing she just reset before the elite four and picked up from there which i think a lot of people that are kind of like tryhards or, or maybe like sweaty nerds don't get me wrong no offense sweaty nerd uh speaking but i think a lot of people would be like oh well then you lost the nuzlocke you have to restart but honestly like when you're doing it for something like this i think that it's way more captivating that we got that ending to the animation um i am a big fan i think that that was really well done i, I loved it uh but yeah dude that's a that's a tough beat this was legitimately like crit the game if you saw how many times she missed an encounter because of crits i think it was at least twice she missed encounters because of crits how many mons she lost because of crits like that's that's tough that i mean that's the rng of doing nuzlocks either way uh big shout out i loved this i thought it was fantastic also i wouldn't feel if i was Jaden, i wouldn't feel bad about just wanting to see if i could beat the elite four had i not got crit like obviously a lot of people say like oh you didn't actually win but then i think if you think about it from another perspective of like hey let's just make the best content that we can then that's what Jaden did anyway this is insane i loved it let me know how you feel about it in the comment section down below like talk to me about it there i would love to hear your takes your opinions any sort of like funny uh little easter eggs that i missed put those in the comment section down below but yeah that's it i'm kind of done here and i have to leave okay bye iggy and i want to say thank you so much for making it to the end of this video and if you want to watch more videos and make it to the end of those there will be two one right here one right here this is one that i think is really good and this is one that youtube thinks you'll enjoy so pick one and me and iggy will uh, just be hanging out while you watch it okay thanks